Um, I'm the director of a nonprofit called the Foundation for Animal Rescue and Education. Although we've been around Canada for almost 25 years, we've only been doing educational programming in the U.S. for about two or three now. <clears throat> the goal behind these events is, um, I kind of explain it this way. We don't go to giant cities like New York, like Boston. They have all of the museums and zoos and science centers, every educational program you can imagine. We prefer smaller cities like ones in Alabama or ones in you know, rural Pennsylvania, stuff like that. Cities that don't have their own zoos, museums, science centers, and we do, we have biologists where you can ask questions, we have presentations that go on, all sorts of exhibits about backyard conservation, responsible pet ownership, and the goal is, first of all, a fundraiser for conservation efforts, animal rescue, and secondly, as a vehicle to deliver educational messages to communities that would normally not get it. Now talk about some of the feature animals. Here's some of the feature animals we have here today include an opossum, we have an armadillo, we have a sloth, we have uh, giant monitor lizards, we have boa constrictors, tarantulas, and lots of like cute furry things as well, like your bunny rabbits, tortoises, guinea pigs, and everything in between. So cool. What is your favorite part about doing this? It looks like you have a lot of fun up there. It is, and actually uh, people ask me a lot what my favorite animal is, and people always expect me to say some crazy ridiculous animal like sloth, but actually my favorite animals and my favorite thing about the job are kind of both the same thing. My favorite animals are the ones that people have the most misconceptions about, where the distance between reality and public perception is the greatest. So I like talking about animals like rats, snakes, tarantulas. People are shocked, and there's no such thing as a deadly tarantula. Tarantulas have killed zero people. More dangerous than tarantulas, house cats, hamsters, you name it. Um, people, people are, you know, as you saw, startled. We say, you were not supposed to feed our rabbit lots of carrots? No, you're not supposed to feed a rabbit lots of carrots. Or when they learn parrots can live 50, 60, 70, even 80 years. Um, or that not all snakes are venomous. Uh, people people um, usually get most affected uh, from these presentations, not by meeting the cute animal like the sloth, but they usually get most affected when um, their uh, misconceptions about are challenged about the animals uh, and, and that's usually where the real uh, educational component happens. So we are open today and tomorrow only from 10 to 5. We do two presentations where the feature animals come out and they rotate all day long. So we do a 30 minute pre presentation, 15 minute meet and greet, 30 minute presentation, 15 minute meet and greet and it rotates all day long. So there's no set time where you have to come. All the information for uh, admissions and everything else is on Facebook. So people look up FAIR, Foundation for Animal Rescue and Education. You can see our Huntsville event as well as our other events on there for full information. And what's also important to know is we have a very strict accessibility policy. No one gets turned away. If you message us, say you can't afford uh, our admission, we'll say we'll give you a ticket with a discount. Say you can't afford that, we'll let you in for free. If uh, you have uh, someone in your family with autism, someone for for whatever reason can't stand crowds or loud noises we have a free hour for you from 9 to 10 a.m. tomorrow where you can come meet the animals where we don't run the speakers where it's entirely free to come in uh, so we find it very important to make sure this is very accessible to everyone uh, so we never turn anyone away and if anyone has any questions uh, message us on Facebook we have someone there every day to answer questions as well people do have armadillos like this as pets and they behave a lot like a puppy they chase balls um, they like their tummies getting tickled which is very, very weird. Even though these guys are not commonly kept as pets, they behave like puppies a lot, which is very, very weird. We have uh, one up in Canada that always shows its belly and just asks for its belly to be tickled. Now these guys, do you know what animal they're related to? What? Sloths. There is a very weird group called Xenarthra, which includes sloths, armadillos, and ant eaters. So all of the animals, excuse me, the animal as well. We recognize you keep hands down. You can put your phone up and take as many pictures as you want, as long as Flash is off. So guys, this is Flash. He's a Linnaean two-toed sloth. He's one of six species of sloth left on Earth. Next, actually, I'm gonna grab his food too, just so you guys can see him eating as well. <laughs> now remember, this is the slowest No, that's okay. There we go. You only want to be hand fed. So this is the slowest mammal on earth. What color is he? Brown. What color would he be in the wild? Green. Why would he be green? Because he is so slow that moss and algae grow over his fur.